Hello, this is John Wecker with Life Science TV. I'm here at Life Science Innovation Northwest 2016, and I'm joined today by Dr. Charlotte Hubbard. Charlotte, good to see you. Good to see you too. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. And congratulations on the Women in Life Science Award. Oh, thank you. It's a great honor. So you are with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So tell us what's going on at the Gates Foundation now that's really exciting to you. Well, it's an exciting time to be at the foundation. You know, it's, it's blast sand blasted right on the wall of the building. All lives have equal value, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a great reason to get out of bed every day. Mm -hmm. But with that, you know, focusing on the disproportionate diseases and issues that affect uh, the poor in, in Southeast Asia and Africa, that's that's kind of a big deal. Yeah, it you is. know, big problems to be solved there. And you know, markets don't don't always think about the poor. They don't do a good job of, of, of thinking about that. And you know, the essential thesis of the work we do from a venture perspective believes that innovation is really going to be the best way mm -hmm. to catalyze change and thinking about these issues and rather than just corporate response social responsibility making them front front and center mm -hmm. in the conversations we have about technology and company formation mm -hmm. so in, in that regard i think it's an exciting time for us to enter the arena to enter the venture arena yeah. and start thinking about how we can be catalytic to the industry and get people thinking about the the issues that we care about Great. And so you've mentioned the word venture, yes. but you haven't quite told us exactly what you do and what you're responsible for. So could you tell us a little about that? Sure. So I'm on the program related investments team, and that's the, the group at the foundation that's focused on engaging the private sector. Okay. You know, we think the private sector is going to be essential to getting this innovation and getting the answers to the problems that we have. Mm -hmm. The best entrepreneurs, the best technology, the best investors, they're already there. Mm -hmm. So our team is focused on that engagement. Um, and venture is just one small part of that. It's just one small part of the story in, way we, in the way that we engage. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're building a portfolio of investments in biotech. Mm -hmm. And you know we're, we're impact investors. So we're investing in companies to make charitable commitments, durable commitments, mm -hmm. to make their products and services and technologies affordable and accessible in the developing world. Great. And do you have a specific example of a particular company or, or technology that you're really excited about that you've committed that venture funding to? Absolutely. I think we've been really lucky. We've been, been investing alongside some of the best in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, some of my favorite investments are Synlogic out of Boston, which is an NEA and atlas back company in the microbiome. You know, mm -hmm. there's real critical need for understanding the microbiome and nutrition and enteric and diarrheal disease in our kids. Mm -hmm. So it was a great company to partner with to come up with some solutions there. Um, I'd say my next most exciting company is a startup out of New York called Lodo Therapeutics okay. that we did in partnership with the Accelerator New York. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know that company is a fresh out of University, Rockefeller University spin out. And we knew that investigator, you know, yeah. he's a grantee of ours, and he's focused on finding new drugs and new antibiotics, which is a really high need for us in global health. Yeah. So these are a couple examples of, I think, our most exciting and most recent investments. Great, wonderful. So how did you, tell us a little about how you got to the foundation. What, 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 what was your career path? I wish I could claim intentionality, <laughs> okay. right? So the best laid plans. Um, I think I'm very, I think very lucky and also very opportunistic. So I've been aware that the foundation's been thinking about this issue. H how do you make markets work for the poor? And, and and more importantly, how do you think about using the venture tool mm -hmm. to engage here? Uh, so you know, throughout my career, being aware of this, you know, my brand is early stage. My brand is value investing. Yeah. You know, I love technology. More importantly, I love the people that go along with this. Yeah. This is as much a people as a technology mm -hmm. industry. Um, so, and I'm, I'm an academic by training, coming out of a postdoc fell in, you know, thick as thieves with VCs. And, you know, that's not an easy transition to make, but that's yeah. the one that I made. I, I started out here in Seattle at the Archback Accelerator yeah. um, and, and got started there scoping technology worldwide and getting to start four or five companies with them, mm -hmm. which is you know, a central part of, I think, how I've been so successful in such short time. Mm -hmm. um, so went from there to HIG BioVentures in Miami, an exceptional opportunity, broader platform, in investing in all stages and all sectors. So really rounding out my experience. Yeah. But then coming home and, and when the opportunity arose to be part of beginning the venture outreach for the foundation, mm -hmm. that was an opportunity I couldn't turn down. Well, good for you. You know, I'm going to drill down on that. That one transition moment when you mm -hmm. said you felt thick as thieves into the VC. Yeah. How did that happen? Because and, and I took a non-traditional twist in my career after postdoc as well. So I had my experience, but I'm really interested and I'm sure many people out there are interested. How does that happen? Yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Total random chance. <laughs> That's not the answer that it was. It is most satisfying. But you know, in my case, venture finds you. Okay. You know, I, I, I think that um, 
they're looking for people that are willing to get stuff done. And, you know, that's a real watchword for me. I'm, I'm willing to do incredible amounts of work. So when the opportunity is given to go from, you know, professorial track to being intern, yeah, you know, that's a, that was a big, yeah, a big risk. Yeah. But, you know, these are the kinds of risks you have to take and also the risk appetite you, you demonstrate to VCs. So I'd have to say, you know, intentional entry into yeah. venture. I'm not quite sure how that's done, um, but I, I was tremendously lucky uh, with a group that I fell into um, that actually can use my scientific expertise to make investments. Yeah. Random, but at the same time, are prepared and opened, oh, prepared and open to new possibilities. And when they present themselves, you can take that step forward. That's exactly right. Okay, good. Um, so, Women in Life Science, again, congratulations. And you know, we were just chatting and at some level, we all say, why do we even need to have to acknowledge women in life science? I mean, haven't we reached the day when it's that we don't need to call that out, and yet we haven't reached the day? Mm -hmm. um, so, a little tell you a little bit about just how you feel about the diversity issue and, and where we are today, realistically. You know, I think it's a really important conversation that's going on in our industry that's beyond gender even. It's just about diversity and inclusion, period. And you know, why that's so important from an innovation perspective is variety of ideas, and it leads to great problem solving, which leads to great products, mm -hmm. which leads to better returns. So mm -hmm. you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand that part. Are we doing better? You look at live stream report in the last year about what's the bio, you know, the gender diversity in biotech right now. We're doing really well by a lot of metrics in mm -hmm. terms of that parity in the upper levels of C-suite and boardroom decision making, yeah. you know, we're down in the 10 to, to 20%. Mm -hmm. And I feel like maybe it's that, what we call the foundation, that la last mile delivery, uh -huh. right? Is that is that a, a going to be one, one hire at a time, one extremely qualified hire at a time, uh, most likely? Mm -hmm. But it's, I think it's a really exciting and fulminant moment. And, and for me, I think getting this award is more reflection of who we are in the Pacific Northwest. You know, okay. I'm a Pacific Northwest kid. Mm -hmm. And so when I was growing up, you know, a kid of the 80s, Ms. Magazine and all that, it never occurred to me that I couldn't do exactly what I wanted to do mm -hmm. with my life. Mm -hmm. um, and that's still today. I think that I have benefited greatly from our regional, uh, I guess, culture, mm -hmm. um, that I was judged on the content of my character mm -hmm. and the value of my work. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, I can tell having traveled the world, it's not that way everywhere. Yeah. Um, but I think that the times are, are changing. Um, and I think just keeping that momentum going and taking the lessons we learn as women and making them available and inclusive to everyone mm -hmm. who would want to be included from a diversity perspective in our industry. Yeah, and you mentioned to me that, that the Gates Foundation has really embraced this diversity, and especially gender diversity, mm -hmm. and they have quite a, quite a substantial presence of female women in, in the workforce there. Is that unique to the foundation, or is that more a, a regional? What, what's, what's your th thoughts there? Oh, absolutely. It's an exciting day to walk into work and have it be 50% women and, and up until recently being working for a woman. I, I think that, um, you know, there's a strong presence there about diversity and inclusion, yeah. right? I said that eclipses, you know, gender specifically. Um, is that a, a product that Bill and Melinda are also Northwest kids? Probably. Yeah. Um, I think, is it a little bit different from other places in the world? Yeah. I think that we take it very seriously. Mm -hmm. um, I think the foundation does a great job of trying to make that balance really apparent because it's, like I said, it's on the side of the building. Yeah. You know, equality for all. And it really resonates and it means a lot to as an employee that that goes down to the level of the hires that they make and yeah. then the inclusion they have at the decision-making table. Wow. Well, yeah. yeah, that last mile. It's step by step, but we'll <laughs> yeah. get there. We'll get Absolutely. there. Absolutely. All right, Charlotte, it's been an absolute pleasure talking with you today. Thanks so much. This is John Wecker for Life Science TV, and um, wish you all a good day.